Hello there. My chosen animal to base this podcast on is the axolotl. Now I've chosen the axolotl because I and myself don't know much about this animal, and I find it rather fascinating. So on your screens right now are the learning intentions, which I will cover throughout the whole podcast. In case the word axolotl doesn't ring a bell, here are some facts. You may be wondering. How do you know if something is a living organism? Well, in order to be classified as a living organism, the organism must carry out all of the life processes. The life processes can easily be remembered through the acronym Mrs. Green, which are M for movement, R for reproduction, S for sensitivity, G for growth, R for respiration, E for excretion, and N for nutrition. Movement. Axolotls move around from place to place by using their legs to swim, propel themselves through water. Axolotls swim because they live in the water. Young axolotls move around very fast and move around often, compared to adult axolotls, which are very inactive and rarely move. But when they do, they move slowly. Reproduction. A male axolotl reproduces with a female to produce young axolotls and carry on the species. Females release 300 to 1,100 eggs, which they then lay on vegetation. Hatching takes place two to three weeks after the eggs have been laid. Now, what is unusual is that axolotls are capable of a phenomenon called neoteny, which is reproduction at larval stage. Neoteny happens because axolotls don't metamorphosize out of their larval stage into adulthood. Axolotls are sensitive to water quality and temperature because these two factors cause reactions from them which affect axolotls' health. Poor water quality can cause axolotls to be ill and possibly even die after time because of bacterial contamination and disease passed through from invasive species. All temperatures below 14 degrees Celsius (57.2 Fahrenheit) results in sluggish activity and a lower metabolism (working rate of body). Both axolotls grow larger in size. They get longer, their gills grow larger, and they begin to develop lungs. However, they still retain their larval characteristics, as they don't develop adult ones because they are a neotonic species. Axolotls grow this way because it is their natural process of growing up. Respiration. In order for respiration to take place in the mitochondria of the cells of any living organism, there must be glucose, food, and oxygen present. Axolotls get food and oxygen into their bodies by consuming animals, food, and either taking in oxygen through their gills, cutaneously. Diffusing dissolved oxygen in the water through their skin, or, especially for older axolotls, filling their lungs with air from the surface. Axolotls get glucose into their cells this way because they are carnivorous and eat animals. They also get oxygen this way as they live in the water, are amphibians, and have lungs. As soon as glucose and oxygen are present in the cells, respiration takes place. Axolotls respire this way because this is how they get their energy from food. Excretion. Axolotls excrete by releasing part of their waste as weak urine and the rest through their gills. What they excrete is in the form of ammonia (NH3), which is a toxic substance. They excrete this way because this is how they get rid of the unnecessary waste in their body. An axolotl's diet consists of mollusks, some fish, crustaceans, worms, insects, e.g., crickets, as well as insect larvae. Young also eat algae, and older axolotls consume aquatic insects. This is their form of nutrition because they are carnivorous, which means they prey on animals. Axolotls are listed on the IUCN Red List 2006. An appendix to our sites as critically endangered. When searching for food, axolotls are threatened by introduced fish into their habitat, such as carp and tilapia, as they eat animals that are part of an axolotl's diet.
This stops axolotls fulfilling their nutritional needs and part of their respirational needs, getting glucose into their cells. They are also threatened by a declining habitat due to the water of Lake Xochilmico complex getting drained and contaminated as axolotls are sensitive to poor water quality. Poor water quality affects their health and makes them ill. It can also lead them to death if they are infected by the polluted, bacteria contaminated and disease filled water for more than a day or two. In summary, this podcast has been about how axolotls carry out Mrs. Green and why they do it in a certain way, in addition to what threatens their survival and how the threats relate to them carrying out Mrs. Green. I hope you have learnt something from this and will take away some bits of information with you.